Yes, you guys, and how are you all doing tonight? I'm Nini FC, this is Blue Lion CV, and welcome to the match preview for Frank Lampard's first game in charge as the new manager of this football club. And we were all expecting fireworks. However, we need to be realistic. We need to understand and respect the context for today's game. I know that some people might be a bit frustrated because yes, we didn't win this game. We're coming up against a bohemian team where quite a lot of the players are playing part-time. So some people may feel as if this isn't a very good reflection of the club, but this is what I'm talking about with context. It's pre-season. The guys have only been training for a few days now and it's understandable that they don't have that match fitness, they don't want to risk picking up any injuries, they don't have that mental sharpness just yet and it was quite evident today, deep here. When you're tired, you don't think clearly, you don't think smart and you're more susceptible to making mistakes. The same thing applies to football. So what I would say is don't worry, you know, it's pre-season. As the players get fitter and stronger and sharper, the performances are going to get better. And in today's pre-season game, it was actually quite fascinating. So many talking points, so many things to discuss, to think about. I'm going to be releasing a five talking points video for tomorrow because there's just so much to talk about after tonight's game. However, before I get into anything, today's video is brought to you by the One Football app. And I'm telling you guys, for this year's preseason, with all the lone players, with all the new systems and players being introduced into the team, the One Football app is the best app to keep up to date with all things preseason. If you guys want the One Football app, it will be in the link in the description below. Now for today's match review, I'm going to be breaking it down into the first half and the second half, and that's because in the first half we used the 4-2-3-1 formation, and in the second half we used the 4-3-3. And immediately, it tells you that these are going to be the two main formations that Lampard is going to be looking to use as the season progresses. And I feel as if when you look at the squad and the players who could be potentially becoming a part of that squad, then yeah, I feel as if both these formations are the best ones to use. In the first half, we saw Dujon Sterling and Kennedy playing as fullbacks. We saw Guy in defence on the left-hand side. We saw Conor Gallagher, Casey Palmer, Mitchie up front as well, plus a few others on top of that. And immediately, you could tell that we're going to be a team that looks to play down the flanks. Maybe it might be a bit too early for me to say, but I was getting some comparisons with Leicester City and how they like to play with the ball and you know it's all about focusing the passes and the play down either flank we use the the central positions very rarely and we mainly use the central positions to help you know switch the play keep things moving keep things ticking on top of that we saw Conor Gallagher playing as a central attacking midfield player and yeah he was decent at times I thought the way he pressed was impressive and I let you guys know this straight away when we use the 4-2-3-1 for this season it's mainly going to be used against teams that are better than us because we'll be playing with a much more aggressive counter-attacking style and it makes sense that Lampard is going to look towards guys like you know Gallagher, Mount etc etc because if you're playing in that position you need to help with the first phase of pressing and that's key these days and that's one thing that Conor Gallagher is great at doing you know at times um he was moving the ball quite nicely very quickly hitting it from left to right but um i'm not going to be too harsh with his performance no one's fully fit right now i mean that's the reality it was only a few days ago that these guys flew out to dublin to kickstart pre-season so we need to understand and respect that um we can't be too uh critical of the players tonight one standout of the first top was ethan Ampadu and Ampadu is a type of player that you just don't like playing against. I mean, uh, he gets very tight and very aggressive against his opposition player. And obviously, we've all played football. You know that guy that just doesn't care. He's okay. He's comfortable getting within your personal space. He's going to get as tight as he can if it means that he is going to win the ball. And he's going to be aggressive. And he's going to be fun. Ampadu showed all those qualities in today's game. And at times, I thought his use of the ball was very good. The way that he switched the play very quickly from left to right and playing in the middle where it's about, obviously, you know, keeping the stability centrally. I thought that he was very good uh, competing for 50-50s. And you know, when it comes to Bohemian, they're in the middle of their season. So their players are fitter than ours. And when I saw Ethan playing today, 
Honestly, I wouldn't have realised that he's only had a few days of pre-season. He wasn't playing like that. And that's the type of mentality that I love to see in young players. As you can see though, using this style of formation, you're more likely to use two defensively solid midfield players in the pivot. And as I said, this is going to be the tactic mainly used against teams that are better than us. So we can play with an aggressive counter pressing style. Obviously, Mitchy took his goal quite well. And I think that's what really suits the guy's game. Come on, we, we all know that when it comes to his overall game, uh, it's not really there. I mean, he's not going to be the link up guy. He's not going to bring a midfield in. He's always going to be the guy who's going to get inside the box, play on the shoulder, make runs every single time. And to be fair, that's what you do to get the best out of Mitchie because I feel that his finishing is top quality. It really is that good. And I feel as if that uh, if he gets the opportunity to stay with the squad for this season, then I think that he could potentially do bits. I, I really do. I think that we need that sort of striker that is very good at, you know, operating in very tight, small spaces, whose finishing ability is on point. It's going to be interesting to see how he performs as preseason goes on. And just to end my thoughts on the first half, I guess the only thing I'd say is that as the game went on, I thought that Dujon and Kennedy were making more and more mistakes. Understandable, they're tired. You know, playing in this new system under Frank Lampard, where it's all about how you use the wide areas. There's going to be a lot of pressure put on the fullbacks. They need to be really fit because you're constantly bombing up and down the fields. Still though, you know, for me, Kennedy, is never going to be a fullback it's not in his game I understand that due to circumstances he had to be used there I'm hoping that we get to see Kennedy playing down the right hand side I'd love to see that I'd like to see him get that opportunity I've always felt that that's his best position and I've never understood every club's insistence on using him outside of his best position it doesn't make sense now moving on to the second half and this is where things got a bit more interesting. We saw the 4-3-3 being used. We saw Lewis Baker technically in the Jorginho role at the base of midfield. And alongside him was Billy Gilmore and Bakayoko. Playing left back was Ian Matson, And Matson is someone that I'll be speaking about in this review. So just wait for me. And finally, we saw Kurt Zuma playing in defence. And... It's felt like an eternity since I've seen Zuma playing for us. And uh, yeah, he does look good in the kit. He wasn't really tested in this game today, understandable. I didn't get the sense that Zuma really wanted to exert himself too much. Probably a lot of sense behind that as well. The start of preseason, the last thing any player wants to do is to pick up potential mocks. I mean, especially Kai Zuma. He knows what an injury did to his uh, Chelsea future last time. And that's the last thing that Zuma wants to do again. Regardless of it being pre-season though, I have to say that there was a noticeable improvement in quality in the second half. Not only was that due to the 4-3-3, and I really feel that having an extra man in midfield helps us move the ball more, keep possession better, you know, stop giving away these silly turnovers that we were doing quite a lot in the first half and it allowed the fullbacks to push on even more and to stretch the game even more. I do want to talk about Lewis Baker. Now, when it comes to Lewis Baker, I've always felt that he's been a real victim of the lone army. Unfortunately, due to the club being quite selfish in regards, uh, you know, waiting to bring in replacements before letting Lewis Baker go on loan, it's meant that he's been forced after five moves in the championship. And you know how football goes. The minute your first season doesn't go to plan, that affects your opportunities for the second season. Now, thank God that Reading came in for him and finally started to use him in his best position because the guy is a real baller. But we could see the guy's potential in today's game. Left foot, right foot, his passing range. I mean, that's always been one of Lewis Baker's best qualities. He's a set piece king. And I do feel as if, if Baker really performs this preseason, who knows what might happen? I think that, um, you know, for an English player to have his qualities, it is quite rare. And I feel as if now with uh, Morris and Lampard taking the helms at this club right now, there is a renewed sense of hope and optimism for players like Lewis Baker. Now, yeah, he did make a mistake with the equaliser. You know, he pressed when he didn't need to press. Uh, it's understandable. 
it has been a while since he's been playing with these guys and it's the start of pre-season so I'm not going to hold that against him instead I felt as if we should focus on the quality pieces of play that he produced in today's game anyway with Lewis Baker playing in the base of midfield it allowed the other midfield players to you know break the lines push forward and it just got me thinking imagine as the season's in full flow when guys like Ruben are back Kante, Hudson, Adoy, etc., etc. Yeah, it does seem pretty exciting. I can see what could potentially happen, but it was key. And I do see us predominantly using the 4 3 3 formation because I think that control in midfield is one of the most important things to have. Now, moving on to Billy Gilmore, and I know that a lot of us fans are quite excited to see how Gilmore is going to be for this preseason. In tonight's game, there were some nice pieces of individual play from Billy Gilmore, some nice moments of technique and skill, and it was quite unlucky that he wasn't able to get a goal today. I thought that he was very confident in the way he was taking his opportunities on goal. He wasn't afraid to do that. He wasn't afraid to get in those dangerous positions, and a lot of times with dangerous positions, they're also positions where the spotlight's constantly going to be on you because in those positions you have to be effective you need to make something happen so a credit to Gilmore for not playing within himself for trying to express himself in players game and as preseason progresses it is going to be interesting to see how Gilmore develops how he plays and what the future is going to hold for him now Matson, the young Dutch defender who plays for the academy was playing as a left back and some of you guys might be a bit confused because you might be thinking hey Nini isn't this guy supposed to be a central defender However, this is the Chelsea Academy. We love to have players of this dimension, players that are comfortable and able to play in multiple positions. And as you can see with Matson, he has that natural flair and that silky touch in his game. You know, he knew what to do with the ball before he received it. He wasn't giving away possession. Whenever he was getting closed in, he knew how to play out from those situations and it was completely different to Dujon Sterling and to Kennedy. Now in tomorrow's video, I'm going to be talking about Matson some more. And I'm going to be talking about, you know, why players like him are very important for our future. Anyway, just to wrap up today's match review, if there's one thing to take from tonight's game, that's the fact that the focus is going to be on how this team presses. And throughout moments in tonight's game, a lot of times we were caught in the transition we were caught on the counter-attack and yes i do know that it's pre-season and players aren't fully fit and actually the spaces were only going to get wider and bigger because the guys can't run for 45 minutes even but of course pressing is key in modern day football especially if you're a team that likes to you know take control of the ball and impose your game on an opposition and that's because pressing is basically defending defending off the ball is important it's key and that's one thing that Lampard is definitely going to be focusing on a ton for this season anyway you guys I'm going to end things for today's match review please like comment and subscribe in the comment section below give me your observations on tonight's game who stood out for you what conclusions did you come to who are you hoping to see more of as pre-season progresses let me know below make sure you do that yep it's going to be a very busy period from now on you guys so I'll see you man tomorrow I'm Nini FC, this is Blue Lions TV, signing out.